Hello, cryptographers. The practice of decoding the news has a few names. For English, we prefer to use the term cryptography and ciphers to uncover military-grade neuro-linguistic programming. Some prefer to use the word gematria when it comes to alphanumeric decoding or encoding. You may have learned about ciphers or gematria from your history books about the dawn of cryptography, which involves keeping messages encrypted for privacy and secrecy. In this video, we'll run through the history of gematria, tying it back into modern day ciphers. It all begins in 1000 BC. This is the dawn of the Phoenician language, where the earliest phonetic alphabet was created and archived. This is also the beginning of the practice of coding numbers into letters. At that moment in history, from our research, only two ciphers or patterns of coding were considered original gematria. The first was called ordinal, where A equals 1, B equals 2, C equals 3, and so on up until Z, the 26th letter. The second type of cipher for Phoenician gematria is called extended. This is where there is a specific pattern of double and triple digits as the alphabet increments. Back in the day, it is said that the Phoenicians added both sums together to arrive at the total gematria value. At a similar time in history, circa 1000 to 0 BC, two languages that immediately rose out of Phoenician were Greek and Hebrew at about the same time. Also, so far, for all these alphabets, they were read from right to left. It's contested which language came first between the Hebrew and Greek alphabets. Yet, we like to discern that Greek became first because of this interesting note about etymology. So, the history is that the Greeks took the Phoenician cryptography for their own language and called it isopsophy. Then, the Hebrews also copied this practice from the Phoenicians and the Greeks and then named it gematria, which has roots in the Greek word. The etymology of gematria was sourced from the Greek word geometria, geometry. Some scholars believe it to derive from the Greek grammatea, knowledge of writing. For the logic, how could Hebrew gematria predicated Greek asopsophy if the word gematria has etymology sourced from a Greek word. The Hebrew alphabet stayed right to left, while the Greeks later on flipped their alphabet to left to right. Latin and archaic English was developed right to left and also appropriated Phoenician cryptography, Greek isopsophy, Hebrew gematria to form its own ciphers as well. The formula for ordinal and extended survives to this day as the two most ancient ciphers. The extended cipher doesn't get much attention these days. It seems like the old trick of adding ordinal and extended isn't used as often, probably because by probability you end up working with huge numbers which aren't very easy to remember or recognize for anyone anymore. Many cryptographers say the sum practice of ordinal plus extended is completely outdated and gone in English. You'll have to test this for yourself. For now, we'll put away extended from our toolset, knowing at any time we can toggle it back on the ciphers calculator. In 1928, Manley P. Hall wrote the book, The Secret Teachings of All Ages, which is the best source material to learn about ciphers and symbolic philosophy. The author doesn't specifically call this work gematria, yet make sure to turn to the chapters The Cryptogram as a Factor in Symbolic Philosophy first, as it outlines the seven ciphers of cryptography and how to use them to decode or encode cryptograms. You'll notice that Manley P. Hall outlines the numeric cipher as an identical table of correspondence as would be traditional ordinal gematria. Manley P. Hall proves that ordinal has been used since archaic English. 
which would be equivalent to pre-Shakespearean language. In that alphabet, there was only 24 letters, and the I and J were interchanged as well as U and V. That's why they have equal values on the Baconian or Archaic Ordinal English ciphers. On most calculators, this will be called the Bacon ciphers, yet in my opinion, that's an incorrect name. I prefer calling this the Archaic Ordinal cipher. Sometimes decoders still use this archaic English ordinal, aka Baconian ciphers, to decode ancient English manuscripts or just to see if there's any other random riddles being hidden there. However, archaic or Baconian ordinal, for the most part, isn't used very much in modern day. Since the great vowel shift in history, it's said that the popes and Jesuits at the Vatican created the Gregorian calendar in tandem with the 26-letter alphabet, which gave us modern English and hence modern English ordinal and modern symbolic cryptography. So another concept from Manley P. Hall's 1928 chapter, The Cryptogram as a Factor in Symbolic Philosophy, is that we are introduced to a new concept of simply involving reversing the ordinal cipher that already existed. So now we get the reverse ordinal cipher. And these two are part of the four base ciphers because they're the most popular. For short, this is your typical English ordinal and reverse English ordinal cipher now. And it's two out of the four base ciphers on the calculator. So, also in 1928, in the book by Manly P. Hall, The Secret Teachings of All Ages, make sure to read the chapter Pythagorean Mathematics, because here lies source to another important cipher called the Reduction Cipher. So, rewind back to Greece and Greek isopsophy. During the ancient empire times, the infamous mathematician Pythagoras was credited for Pythagorean reduction as a form of numerology. This method was known for adding each individual number and then reducing multiple digit numbers to only one number. Upon this conscious tool, then it became a method to incorporate back into the alphabet and into its own cipher, which now survives as the reduction cipher. Yet remember that reduction is not as old as ordinal or extended. It was found much later in the timeline of cryptography, yet it's still old enough from today to hold a tremendous power. So we have unlocked at this point the four base ciphers. Now we have English ordinal, reverse English ordinal, English reduction, and reverse English reduction. Four base ciphers were pretty much all caught up now. Let's fast forward to modern day. So in 2013 and 2016 up until now, you may have learned Gematria from Zachary K. Hubbard, who has a channel named Gematria Effect News. He pioneered teaching about this practice on his website, YouTube, and through promoting his free books on the subject, Letters and Numbers, plus now a new book titled number games. From Zach, we all learned that the Cabal are using English gematria through the media, the fifth branch of government, to subliminally hide numerical codes in the alphabet, words, and phrases. Zach's teachings are a great starting reference to learning to decode the news. To this day, in 2023, Zachary K. Hubbard has uploaded decodes for over a decade, showing up almost every day creating a Gamatria speaker social media website called Free to Find Truth and traveling the country to spread the word outdoors. So in 2015 and 2016, Derek Takuri, one of Zach's subscribers, created the Gamatrinator calculator, which revolutionized the toolset available to decode Gamatria. The Gamatrinator calculator features over 30 ciphers because since the boom of cryptography through the technology of ink, pen, and paper, everyone and anyone could invent a cipher to keep their secrets safe, between only those with the key to understand their cipher and decode the meaning. Some of the Gamatronator calc ciphers are also historical, while others are mathematics-based. Let's run through the important ones. 
We've talked about the four bass and extended as well as the Baconian ciphers. But some other really easy ciphers are the caps lock ciphers, which are basically ordinal and reduction, but using capital or lowercase letters in the entire chart. Many will say that a Greek bus cipher is high up on the toolkit. It is called Latin on the Gematronator calc, and it was created very similar to extended. You do end up getting a large number on most words you type. The next interesting cipher is Chiro or Chaldean numerology, which is very similar to the Pythagorean reduction cipher. Next, we have the Satanic cipher. There's not much of a source to how old this one is, yet it starts with A equals 36, and we know that the 36th triangular number is 666. In the cipher Satanic Gematria, it equals 666. Speaking of Satanism, there's a whole section of Thelemic ciphers which were created by fans of Aleister Crowley to decode Crowley's work. Albeit, there's no evidence that Crowley knew of these ciphers, Crowley instead would have decoded using Hebrew gematria or Greek isopsophy, or just, you know, the English ciphers. The Illuminati ciphers were created by Adam Weishaupt, the founder of the Illuminati, and these were primarily for those that entered into the hierarchy. From here, let's talk about the mathematical ciphers, primes, trigonal, squares, and Fibonacci. These are organic patterns found in maths or the universe, so you'll likely find some interesting matches in this realm. The most modern cipher we have is the keypad cipher based on, you guessed it, the format on your phone's dialing keypad. Okay, so that's a wrap. Since ordinal predicates all other four base ciphers, or in other words, it is the oldest known cipher proven by historical records, it is the one we use the most to decode. Quick shout out to my friend Luis Gonzalez, who has a website called Gematria Research because I learned so much of the ciphers that Gematronator Calc has on his website through his research. Please check out his website to learn more in-depth information about these ciphers. We're going to talk about a very special cipher at the end of this lesson because in Phoenicia, when Phoenician cryptography was invented, the number six was very important. The Phoenicians invented the concept of time. They gave the math to 60 seconds in a minute, 60 minutes in an hour, and six is allegedly a perfect number. So there is a special cipher called Sumerian, based off, you know, the Phoenicians, which is simply ordinal with intervals of six instead. So A equals six, B equals 12, C equals 18, and so on. Because of this parallel pattern, any words or phrases that match in ordinal will always match in Sumerian or reverse ordinal and reverse Samar Sumerian. The source of the Sumerian cipher is unknown, so it doesn't have much credibility, but it is interesting that the oldest Gematria calculator, www.gematrix.com, calls the Sumerian cipher English Gematria, straight up. So we think there's more to it than we can find source. The webmaster of Gematrix is impossible to reach or find, otherwise they'd be a great source to interview. In 2020, Netvoid produced a documentary titled Metaphysics about numerology and coincidentally Gematria featuring Zach of Gematria Effect News and Derek of Gematronator. In 2021, Sean Verocco, an anagram for coronavirus, a stage name for another Zach and Derek subscriber, modded the Gematronator calculator and updated new features naming it the Gematro calculator. In 2022, Sean the webmaster nuked Gematro and has since wiped trace of himself. We no longer have any form to contact him. There's a few other calculators out there, yet we think ciphers.news, the respawn of Gematro and Gematronator, is the best free one. All you need to do is make sure to download your free copy of databases and import the file to match words and begin your journey in decoding. I hope these notes were helpful for you. And just to leave with some decodes, so back to English Ordinal, the modern one. According to Zachary K. Hubbard of Gematria Effect News, in the opening chapters of his books, Letters and Numbers, for example, you'll find it astounding that 
for 74 English Ordinal, you'll get English, matching Gematria, Jewish, Masonic, Jesus, Lucifer, Energy, and Occult. And how funny is it that in 155 English Ordinal, you get Coronavirus matching Masonic Ritual and China Communism. 222 English Ordinal, you'll get World Economic Forum, Wuhan Coronavirus, some words that we can't say. <laughs> In reduction, not as old as ordinal again, yet still as ancient as Pythagoras, you'll find it weird how 56 reduction equals coronavirus, toilet paper, and more words that we can't say. <laughs> From here, there's several techniques to use numerology in tandem with gematria to reinforce your decoding of news. Try the date numerology calculator to find numbers between important events. You'll find it unbelievable for example, that the US held a pandemic exercise called Clade X 666 days before the scandemic de was declared. Again, thanks to Zach for that decode. Try finding the dates between characters' birthdays in the news, whether they're the governor of the PSYOP of the city, the president, king or queen, the pope, or celebrities. You'll always find something. But repeating numbers are usually a tall tale sign that something is going on. An another great technique to learn is finding out the numerology of the days of specific events, like what the day reduces to. Multiply some, divide these numbers and see what you get. Rearrange the numbers because remember calendar dates are rearranged differently depending where you are in the world. The US writes month, day, year first, and then the UK and the rest of the world kind of writes day, month, and year. The earth is split by time zones, so something that happens in one side of the world can still be happening on another date, and they always take advantage of that in the news. Lastly, it's important from Derek of Gematronator's blog to learn about eclipses because that is the foundation of Freemasonic symbology. From Vesica Pisces to black and white, cults worship the sun and moon. So there will be a lot of alignments you can measure with date numerology with eclipses as a foundation. Use specific websites like www.xjubier.com to find out when lunar or solar eclipses are happening in contrast to news events. Okay, that's about it for now on the lesson of cryptography, gematria, and ciphers. Hope you all have the tools to get ahead as a decoder. Thanks for watching. Let us know in the comments what you thought and please don't forget to subscribe, like, and check out our website www.cyphers.news. Thanks again everyone! Bye!